Welcome to another video from Dr. Lock. What we have today is the Brava Metro Commercial Quality EL3012SC Classroom Set in Satin Chrome 70mm back set suitable for 35-45mm to doors. Okay, now we've got that out of the way, let's have a look. So this uh, is a commercial grade lock. Okay, this is not your standard residential grade, this is the next step up. Now when you go the next step up, the build quality is stronger and it also a lot of the time has some sort of fire rating. So that's what makes it different. All right, so let's just do the unboxing. We'll take everything out. See, clear box, nothing more to see there. All right, let's go through what we actually have here. So we have a latch. This is a what we call a 70 mil latch, which means the lock back set is 70 mil. So when I put that latch together, the edge of the door to the center of this lock right here would be 70 mil back set. You can get these in a 60 mil, or you could buy the latch separately and do it as a 60 mil because a lot of doors are already got a hole at 60 mil. Rather than redrill the hole, you just get the latch to suit. You've got two options, sorry, three options: 60 mil, 70 mil, and 127 mil. So when we were to measure from here to here, this would be 70, and you could have 60. So once again, it's from the center of the lock to the edge of the latch, edge of the latch uh, like this, okay? Which would be the edge of the door. Uh, that's a fire rated latch as well, so you could use that on a fire rated door. Uh, the keys comes with two keys. Um, brand is Brava, the code is on the back, and most of the time that represents the actual pins in the code. So you could order a key to code and that should work. Comes with a striker plate, this is a stainless steel striker plate. Uh, that's like two mil, so that's thicker than normal. Uh, it's really good quality striker plate. It comes with a little strike keeper, and you would simply recess that into your wooden door frame and then mount that over the top, putting it on a on a steel frame you wouldn't need to put that piece of plastic in. You've got some screws here. All right, let's go over the most important ones. The two big ones which have the metal thread uh, in the gold color they're used to for your lock body to put it on. You've got some uh, wood, wood screws here. Uh, wood screws with a little bit of a metal thread up the back of them. They're used for your strike and your latch. You've got two smaller golden wood screws here which are used at the back of this actual lock and I'll show you where. And you've got two other parts right here. To be honest with you, I don't know where they go. Never used them, never fitted them. If somebody knows, leave it in the description. Oh, sorry, in the comments. Oh, you also come up with one of these funny little tools as well. This is used to remove the knob. So, you would remove the knob if you want to change the key. Most people don't want to change the key, so it's no need. All right, so this is a knob lever combination lock. So from the front, you have this knob right here. Uh, from the inside, you have this lever. This is called a classroom set. So what that means is that if, the, if you were to think of it like a classroom, the kids can go in and out of the actual classroom all day using the knob and exiting the classroom using the lever. Now, nothing will happen to this lock. The kids won't be able to manipulate this lock or do anything to this lock. It'll stay in the unlocked position at all times. If for some reason the teacher wishes to close off the classroom, they could come along with their key like this put it in and turn it to the locked position. That seems like it, take the key out. From the outside now, this lock is locked. From the inside, it still remains free to exit in case they've trapped a, a child in the classroom or something along those lines. Also, with commercial premises, the free to exit is required by law for fire exit regulations. So now the lock is locked from the outside, um, then the cleaner or the teacher in the morning might come along, turn the key all the other way to the other side, and then unlock the lock. Once the lock is unlocked, the outside knob then becomes usable. So in this particular scenario, the actual key function only works on the outside knob. It doesn't do anything to the inside because of fire regulations, the inside's always gonna be free. Having the lever on the inside allows for easy access. It's easier for people to grip onto. And the knob on this side of things is just a, a standard knob. So it's easier for exiting by having that lever. Now let's just go over a few little points here as well. How big is this ring here? How, how big is the handle protrusion? How do I put it together? Let's just do that. Okay, so here's the plate on the inside. Now, the diameter of this is 75. So that's quite large, this. If you were putting this in place of a standard lock, it would most likely be slightly bigger. So if you've got a lock that you're taking out, you worry about that painted little ring around the outside of the old lock. If you go for the commercial grade, you're gonna most likely cover it at 75 mil. Uh, the actual lock itself is adjustable. You can adjust it in and out depending on your door thickness. We, on the pack here, it's going from 35 to 45 mil. So that's, that's quite good. I mean, if you can go all the way to 45 mil, I'm pretty sure I've even got them up to a little bit bigger than that and maybe up to about 48 or possibly even 50. Uh, to attach the latch here, you simply uh, put it through the door and you slide this on. This is what's uh, known as a bayonet fitting. So as you can see here, you've got two outer clips with um, well, like little teeth that go outwards and then this center section and you just simply push it on like this and then it's connected. 
as you can see, when you rotate it, it pulls the latch back. You want to make sure that on some of the thicker doors you're not hanging right off the edge here. The sweet spot is pretty much to have this in the middle. You don't want to have it too far back, you want to have it in the middle. Okay, remember they come in 60 mil as well. Um, on the front here, this little hole is to put the key in and remove the knob so that you can change the cylinder. A lot of the time you might not even need to do that. The only time you might need to do that is when we talk about handing of the actual door. Now if you look at this cylinder here, the keyhole is upside down. So if I'm not happy with that, I would put the key in, like so, turn it, turn my knob, and I'm looking for the push-in point. So I'm looking through that little window right here, and I can see the push-in point. As long as my key's in the right position, it's gonna allow me to push it in, and it is. Did we get it? No, let's try that again. They can be a little bit tight, being commercial grade, they are... Okay, let's push it back and let's turn the key the other way. They are a little bit hard to get off sometimes because of just the tolerances and the quality of the build. Okay, so that's starting to slide now. You now just got to pull it hard enough. Ah, there we go. Prime example of being hard to get off. But once you feel it a little bit of give and it's starting to move, then you're right. So what I've done there without mentioning it was I just pulled the key out a slight fraction and I turned the key back to the correct orientation of the 12 o'clock position where I can get the key in and out. The reason I did that is because I now want to put the knob on the correct way up. And to do that, I'm going to have to push it in like so, wiggle my cylinder a little bit so it lines up with this groove here. Pushing, pushing. Now it's getting extremely tight. Now I'm going to put my key in all the way. I'm going to push it all the way back. Keep pushing the knob back. And I'm going to try and find up that pickup point for the cam on the inside. That's why I'm turning the key backwards and forwards. Because it's not going to let you do it unless... Okay, that knob's in the unlocked locked position. Okay, and there we have it. So why was that so hard to get back on? It was so hard because in this particular batch, pushing this knob back on, uh, it's just one size is bigger than the other. The shaft was bigger than the, the actual knob. So yeah, I actually had to give it a tap and I've marked it there slightly to get it back on. Cut a long story short, now the orientation of the key is the right way up. Why do you want the grooves up towards the sky? The reason you want that is because there's little pins inside, like these little uh, pins and springs, and if you were to put in a bad key and it was upside down, gravity would be then working towards you to pull those pins in the wrong direction. And what that may, would mean is if somebody was to abuse your lock, try and pick your lock badly, or jam in bad keys, they're going to squash those springs, and those springs aren't going to have enough pressure to push those pins up. If you put it in the right orientation, you have gravity working in your favor which means even if you have a few squash pins, the pins are going to want to come down on the key and on the key grooves. So uh, putting the key the right orientation up is worthwhile doing. A lot of people don't do it. And what will also, um, also be is easier for people to use because they most of the time line up with the grooves going up towards the sky. Okay, now let's look at the back of the lock here. And what we've got here is the back plate. To pull this apart, you simply uh, just pull this like this. I normally just put my finger in there and just pull it apart like that. You've got a back lunk at the back to actually locate a little uh, nipple on the back. So when you go to put it back on, you line that up first and then you push it back together and you'll see this little spring come up through the side here. And you'll also see uh, this little edge here where the two interlock. Now, we've got two holes here. Uh, what we'll do is we would come through the front of the door, we would line our latch up like so, we would connect these together like that, then we would come on the back of the door and we would tighten up this, this fixing plate. We would use the two large gold screws to go here and here. You then can use these two little wooden screws to go here and here. This will just prevent uh, lock rotation. Some people do it, some people don't do it. It's completely up to you. You would then, after you've got that attached to the door, come through and put this dress plate on the top, and then you would come through and put this handle over the top like so. So I'll just quickly put that back together for you to see. With that latch. So this plate over the top, the little lunk would go over that bit, and then this will come on there. That's what it'll look like so far. Then you come along with your handle like this, and simply just depress that little button with that funny looking tool that nobody knows what the name of it is. If you know what the name of that is, you can leave it down below. And then your lock would be together and it's on the door. Okay, so that's the demonstration of the EL3012SC classroom set satin chrome made by Brava from their Metro 
commercial quality lever set range. Okay, any questions, leave them down below. Any comments, leave them down below. And thanks for watching.